Hi, I'm Demi Utley with Utley Strategies, and today I'm answering the question that I'm often asked, which is, what tool should I be using for my proposals? My answer to this question is, it depends on your proposals. So for RFPs, I find that something like Microsoft Word, honestly, is the best tool um, because it's easy to edit in, it's easy to write in, and it's also easy to design in. Um, but not every proposal is an RFP. So for those situations, what we actually use here at, at Utley Strategies is Pandadoc. And we've been using it for a couple of years now. Um, we're still using it as of this video, which is August 2024. And I really like it for those non-RFP situations where we just need to send over a proposal and pricing um, and we don't have to you know, go through and respond to specific requirements from an RFP. So if you're in that case and you need something for when you're not responding to RFPs or if you never respond to RFPs, then I just want to quickly share what I like about PandaDoc, things that I would change and why it might be a good option for your business. So let's take a look. So first I'm gonna start with the things that I like. So since we've been using it for a couple of years now, I've been honestly really happy with it overall. We'll probably stay with it for a while. And here are a few things that I like about it. So first I like that the design is pretty easy to update. Um, they have a really robust template library. So if you aren't a designer and you don't know exactly how to design your proposal, they have a lot that you can actually choose from. And it's really easy to go in and swap in things like your logo, update your brand colors, um, incorporate your own visuals and photos and things like that. Um, so that way it actually looks like your proposal and it doesn't look like a template created by some company that doesn't even know yours. It's really, really easy to do that in PandaDoc and I'm really happy with it. That's actually one of the main reasons we switched to them. And if there's ever been a situation where I don't know how to actually design it within them, within the tool, then their documentation has been really helpful. So it's really easy to actually design the proposals within PandaDoc. Another thing that I really like about it is that they have these auto fill fields that you can incorporate throughout your proposal template. So I'm a big fan of placeholder text, even within RFPs for your content library, because it makes it a little bit easier for you to actually customize your proposals to a specific customer without having to go through and you know rewrite everything from scratch every time. So I like that they have these built-in fields that you can use for that purpose. So for example, you might have in your boilerplate something like customer name, like maybe this is where you want to include their name um, for something within your actual proposal content. And you can use that field within PandaDoc, and then it will actually go through and fill it in for you whenever you create your proposal. So it makes it really easy to swap in that information and just start making your proposal a little bit more customer focused um, from the very beginning than you know if you didn't have that field. Another thing that I really like is that you can have the contract and the proposal signed at once. So it's sending it over as a single document and you go through and you actually can sign the proposal and you can sign the contract in one place. So this is really great for small businesses. I've seen businesses sometimes that send over just like a PDF as a proposal or something like that, which again, makes sense for RFPs, but when it's something like a smaller project and you're a smaller company, um, you really want to be able to get everything signed as quickly as possible. So I really like that PandaDoc includes both the proposal and the contract in one place. So you can actually incorporate that all at once and get it signed so you can get started on the project a little bit faster. On a similar note, another thing that I really like about PandaDoc is that they allow you to accept payments or so you can have your deposit, for example, at the time of the contract signing and the proposal acceptance. So this means that you don't have to send over a proposal and then have them say, okay, I agree. And then you send over say an invoice or something. You can actually incorporate that within PandaDoc. So it is there for you from the beginning and you can get paid as soon as possible. So I really like that because it means we can start projects a lot faster and cut down on the back and forth and waiting for payment upfront. So if you've watched any of our videos or read any of our blog posts, then you know that we're big fans of content libraries here at Utley Strategies. And PandaDoc actually has a content library option built into the tool. So you can write your most common proposal sections, add them to the content library. And then whenever you're working on a proposal, you can go and you can actually insert those sections wherever you want them within your proposal. So it's a really easy to work with your content library in a tool like this versus having to store it someplace else and then copy it over and paste it into your proposal. So I really love this feature.
Another thing that I really like about Pandadoc is that they have, you can save templates for different services. So for example, um, say you, like in our case, for example, we have corporate trainings that we do, and we also do custom consulting. So these are two very different types of projects. So we have templates for both of these and they, they don't look the same at all because they're very different projects. So anytime we have a request for one of these services, we can go in, select that template, and then really focus on tailoring it to the customer versus taking a generic template and then tailoring it to that project. So it makes it just a little bit easier to create a stronger proposal overall and make it really clear on what exactly it is that we're offering to the customer. Another thing that is really important to me for any sort of technology, of course, is customer service. So with PandaDoc, we've honestly had very few issues since we've switched over to them. But when something has come up, their customer service team has always been really fast at responding and very, very helpful. Most of the time, really, I can normally find something in their documentation and I don't even have to con contact support. But anytime I have contacted them, they've always provided a quick solution, normally within a few hours, if not a full day, but it's rarely taken that long. So I definitely strongly recommend them for their customer support. A few things that I would change. Um, first for PandaDoc, the design is great, but it's also, it's not a, you know, a word processor the way that Microsoft Word is. So it just gets a little complicated if you're trying to actually write your proposal and maintain the design at the same time. So I would recommend creating your templates and kind of drafting your content somewhere else and then adding it to the template. So that way it's just a little bit easier to design and then you can just tweak it for the specific proposals. That's not something that, again, it's not a huge issue, but it is something that is a little annoying if you're coming from Microsoft Word. Another thing that I would maybe change um, is that it's more expensive if you want to include your custom brand. So it's pretty affordable overall, but if you want to incorporate your custom brand details, then it is a little bit more expensive than some of the other competitors out there, such as like Proposify and things like that. Um, but if custom branding isn't that big of a deal for you, then the simplest version of PandaDoc will work. But if you do want custom branding, you're going to have to pay a little bit more for it, but it might be worth it. Another thing that I would maybe change is the built-in dashboard reporting is very simple. It allows you to see, you know, sent, viewed, completed, paid, things like that for the status of your proposals, but it doesn't give you a very clear picture of your overall sales process. Um, it's not really a great replacement for something like a CRM, for example. The way that we're using it is really for proposals and we're tracking all that data elsewhere. Um, Ideally, I would like to be able to customize our dashboard a little bit more, but we haven't really felt the need to invest in the reporting add-on yet, just because we are tracking that someplace else. But if reporting is really important to you within your proposal tool, then that's something that you're going to have to consider and the reporting add-on might be worth the investment for you. Okay, so now that I've shared a few of my pros and cons of PandaDoc, let me just go over a few of the circumstances in which I would definitely recommend using this for your proposals. The first is if you are not responding to RFPs. If you are responding to RFPs, then I would recommend, you know, something like Microsoft Word or whatever you're already currently using. But if you're not responding to RFPs or if you need something outside of those moments, then PandaDoc is a great option for you. Another time that I would recommend it is if you're frequently sending out proposals, then this is a really great platform. I would not recommend it if you're not sending out too many proposals, like say you're doing less than 10 a year or something like that, then a different tool might make more sense for you. Another reason I would recommend it is if you really want well-designed, easy to use templates for your proposals. That's why we moved to PandaDoc and I've been really happy with it so far. It's really easy to make proposals that look good, um, that where you are including your proposal content in a quote, for example, um, and then you just send it off to the customer. It's been really great for that. So I would recommend it if you're looking for something that aligns with those three areas. Okay, so that's a quick overview of what I like about PandaDoc and I, why I don't like it and how you should know if you should look into it for your proposals. I've linked to it below this video. And in fact, I honestly like PandaDoc so much that we've actually signed up to be an affiliate for it because I think we're going to stay with it for a while. So if you click the link, then we may get a small um, bonus for referring you over to them. Um, so full transparency there, but we are huge advocates for it and have been using it for a while. So the only reason we're promoting it is because I truly think it is a really great proposal tool. So that's all, all that I have for you today. Make sure you subscribe for more proposal tips in future videos, and I'll see you next time.